welcome in this video lecture i am going to talk about what is inventory management and then we will discuss while we are managing the inventory what kind of cost are uh, occurring okay and then how we can try to minimize those costs with the help of some set of inventory policies and control systems while we are managing the inventory so uh, then we will discuss certain inventory control systems so first of all we are talking about what is inventory management so basically inventory management is a system in which we are basically applying some set of policies and the control systems to monitor the level of the inventory okay for particular product so as inventory manager our goal is to determine these three questions answers so what level should we maintain of that particular sku when the stock should be replenished of that particular sku and how large the order should be so being an inventory manager or a warehouse or a supply chain manager we should have the answer of these three questions so the main thing is when we are talking about how large the order should be how much inventory level we should maintain so that means there is the different type of cost are going to be occur against those activities so what are those costs so the first cost is basically the item cost or the product cost that is basically simply is the unit uh, cost per unit of that particular product or you can say cost of the sku okay so the item cost or the product cost uh, would be different when there is a quantity discounts concept okay so what was that uh, so remember that this inventory cost or a product cost is not creating the problem while we are managing the inventory if uh, the supplier of our uh, is not giving us any quantity discounts so in terms of the inventory management decision only this inventory cost is important when the supplier of us is providing us the quantity discount so that means this cost factor in order to making the decision that what should quantity level we should maintain and how much we should order is only important when the supplier of us is giving us the quantity discount against the certain product level okay otherwise this inventory cost or the product cost is not creating any particular uh, you can say uh, and not creating any uh, not playing any important role uh, while we are deciding how much we should order and when we should order okay so that is generally we are ignored if there is no quantity discounts so what's the meaning of the quantity discounts that is let's say uh, the supplier of us is giving us the product a is nine rupees per unit he says that if you are going to order 2000 unit then we will give it this particular product uh, 800 rupees per unit or 700 rupees if you are going to order more than 300 so this is the quantity dis discount in which this particular cost factor is going to be play the role okay <laughs> but generally we can ignore uh, if the supplier is not providing us this quantity discount okay the next cost which is playing the important role uh, in the inventory management system is the order cost okay or the setup cost in terms of if we are talking about the manufacturing environment perspective or the production environment perspective otherwise it is called as a order cost so order cost is typically a fixed cost per order or per setup okay and obviously it can vary with respect to the number of orders we are made in, made or the number of setup we are made okay as the order size increases the order cost is going to be decrease so as the order size is going to be increased so the ordering cost is going to be decreased but the carrying cost which we talk about in a minute is going to be increased or you can say the holding cost so this is basically the relationship between the carrying cost or the ordering cost and what was the relationship that is basically based on the order size okay the quantity size you are ordering uh, for that particular product so as the order size is going to be increased your ordering cost is going to be decreased but your carrying cost or the holding cost is going to be increased right so uh, now the question is what kind of factors we can consider while we are 
calculating uh, the total co total order cost against per order. So that is basically different factors we can consider such as the purchase uh, order, okay, <coughs> purchase cost, okay. There is a transportation and the shipping cost we are occurring against per order. Uh, the receiving uh, cost, okay, inspection, handling and storage of the material. So these are the few factors like whenever we are placing the order, so there is certain administrative cost such as the salaries of the employees, record keeping cost, okay. Uh, transportation related fuel cost okay loading unloading related cost inspection okay related cost similarly there is a travel related cost or maybe other cost which we are when we are placing the order so these costs are in combination are making uh, the order cost per order cost okay the next cost is that is basically the carrying cost or you can say the holding cost Okay, so the carrying cost or the holding cost is when we are uh, basically keeping particular SKU in our warehouse or in our storage area. Against that, we have a certain cost. So you can say that vary the level of the inventory as the inventory level of that particular SKU is vary. Okay, and the length of the time the item it is held. So this cost is going to be vary. Okay, as the inventory level of the particular SKU is vary as the uh, length of the time it is going to be spent in the warehouse or the storage area obviously the cost of carrying cost or the holding cost is going to be vary. so typically it is expressed and the percentage of the item cost or a product cost let's say if i am saying uh, the product cost per unit is five dollar uh, per unit okay then we can say that uh, five percent or a fifteen percent of this is basically of this item cost is going to be the carrying cost that's why we are saying usually it is called as the percentage of the sku okay typically it is expressed so now in order to calculate the holding cost per sku or the carrying cost per sku so what kind of factors we are going to consider while we are calculating per sku cost so that is could be the if we have the facility on a rent uh, rental basis so then rent cost we have the heating or the cooling if we need to heat or the cool way okay so against that we have a cost lightning condition okay security record keeping so these are the different factors which basically okay, even spoilage okay the risk related while we are storing it okay and the shrinkage related okay there is a wastage in that uh, cost of insurance, tax, physical handling of the material. So, or even we are buying certain place. Okay. So these factors basically we are considering in order to calculate the holding cost per unit or the carrying cost per unit. And lastly, we have the shortage cost or a stock out cost, which is also known as the back order cost or a loss sale cost. Okay. So over here we have when the customer is dissatisfied, so that means there is a loss uh, of uh, that order, okay. And the shortage cost is basically having the inverse relationship to the carrying cost, okay. So the carrying cost is basically as the inventory level is going to be decreased, okay. So we can say that the holding cost is going to be decreased, but there is a chances of that. The shortage cost is going to be increased so that's why we are saying it has the inverse relationship <laughs> but normally when we are going to talk about the total inventory cost so we have discussed four type of cost one is the item cost or you can say the product cost okay of particular sku uh, plus we discuss about the order cost okay or the setup cost if we are talking about in terms of the manufacturing environment plus we have the holding cost okay uh, of the sku plus we have the shortage cost right and we have uh, discussed this one that this particular cost is not going to be play any important role in the total cost especially when we are going to talk about the decision making in terms of uh, how much we should order when we should order okay if there is no quantity discount factor is there okay so if quantity discount is not there then there is no need to consider this particular factor in order to calculate the total inventory cost 
similarly if there is no shortages are there then there is no need to consider the back order cost or a shortage cost so the only two main factor are the ordering cost or the holding cost generally when we are uh, developing the inventory models in order to give the answer that how much we should order when we should order okay so that means the total cost inventory cost is going to be equal to the order cost plus holding cost or we can say the carrying cost and the relationship between these two are we have seen that they have the inverse relationship as the order size increases the ordering cost is going to be decreased but the carrying cost is going to be uh, uh, decreased okay so generally if we are going to draw is that is basically this is the graphical relationship okay and uh, we can see that that this is basically the order cost okay and this is basically the holding cost or we can say the carrying cost okay so that is basically as the this is basically uh, you can say that this is on y axis we have the total cost this is we have the inventory level okay so as the inventory level increases the holding cost is going to be increased as the inventory level is going to be uh, uh, right now is basically increases okay so larger the order the total cost uh, against the ordering cost is going to be decreased so basically the ordering cost with a larger number of order size is going to be decreased so they have the inverse relationship okay so what we need to do is we need to find out this particular optimum point against which our total cost is minimum so the total cost function is going to be like this one okay over here this is basically the minimum point we need to find out so all the inventory model which we will talk about okay while we are talking about how we can manage the inventory which means in order to give the answer how much we should order when we should order okay that is basically based on this total cost function okay based on what kind of factor we are considering okay we are going to decide and giving the answer of those questions how much we should order what we should order okay and so on so uh, even in order to find out how much we should order and when we should order that is basically depending upon what kind of inventory control system uh, we are trying to adopt okay the first is basically whether you would like to um, adopt the inventory control system of the continuous review or the periodic review system okay so if we are talking about the continuous review system which means we are mainly talking about the order based or the reorder point basis or you can say the quantity based we are monitoring our sku and based on when that is reaching at a certain level then we are going to place the order so we are continuously reviewing the level of the inventory of that particular sku we have and based on that if it is reaches at certain point we are going to place the order so you can say that this is the quantity based okay both uh, the continuous review system whereas in a periodic system we are mainly specific time based here the time is fixed okay after certain time we have to place certain order okay that is periodic okay so this is basically the quantity based we are reviewing the inventory level this is not we are focusing on the in, uh, the inventory level of particular sku but the time based okay so in a continuous review system the first uh, inventory control system we have that is called as sq system okay over s is basically called as the reorder point okay or the order point like when we should order and then q is basically the order quantity system that how much we should order okay so these two question answer we can provide based on this sq sq system and if we are going to represent this one graphically on x axis we have a time okay on y axis we have the inventory level right and this is basically we are saying this is the inventory level we have which is basically equal to let's say that is basically having a certain policy okay and this inventory is basically equal to what when we should order that is a reorder point plus the order quantity which we have uh, given the order okay or the fixed order size so this is the 
inventory position or the inventory level of that particular SKU is. Okay, so right now, if we are saying this is the S point, which means we are going to place the order over here. Okay, and how much we are going to place the order that is equal to Q. So that means the maximum inventory level is going to be S plus Q. So over here, whenever we are going to place the order, that should be equal to Q. And we can find out Q with the help of uh, the inventory model, which we will discuss in the upcoming videos, such as the economic order quantity. Okay, so the uh, this continuous review system, which is the SKQ system is, okay, we are going to place the order whenever the inventory level reaches to the reorder point, which is the S level. How much we should order? We should order equal to Q, which is a fixed order quantity, okay, that we can determine, okay. So this SQ system is also known as two bin system. So you can think about this one. Let's say we have the two bins, bin one and bin two. Okay. And uh, right, these are two are the fills. So we are decided that we are going to place the order when one bin is going to be empty. As long as the one bin, first bin is going to be empty. Okay, we are going to place the order and how much we are going to place the order, the quantity should be equal to bin number one. Okay. So uh, so that means we can refill it okay so similar idea is going to be placed over here that is basically whenever the inventory level reaches to the s level that is a reorder point level we are going to place the order equal to q which is a fixed order quantity okay whereas the ss system is that is basically we are going to place the order at the reorder level when the inventory level reaches to the s level which is the reorder point level and how much we should order? We should order uh, this much quantity that we should be able to reach a capital S level. So this capital S is known as the maximum inventory level. Okay. This is not uh, compulsory that it should be equal to S plus Q. So where Q was the fix, but this S is the pre-decided. Okay. As inventory manager or a supply chain manager or whatever the company policy, you have to decide that how much inventory level you you are going to maximum you are going to keep of that particular sku so that is pre-decided the inventory level okay so that means what we are in monitoring it when it is reaches to that decided okay reorder point we are going to place order and how much we are going to place that we should be able to reach this maximum inventory level so that means in this ss system the how much are we going to place the order that is going to be in a variable form okay so the difference between sq and ss system is in both cases we are going to place the order when we are reaching at the reorder point level but over here in sk sq system we are always going to place the order in which the order size should be equal to q and which is the fixed order quantity whereas in ss system <coughs> how much we should order that is the variable form because every time uh, we don't know okay uh, how much we are going to place the order because we have to reach at the predetermined certain inventory level because over here the capital s is not compulsory equal to the small s plus q okay now we are going to talk about the periodic review system which is a rs system sometimes it is also known as ps system so over here we are saying that we are always basically going to review the inventory level uh, after the r uh, time period or a t time period okay and then how much we should order that is going to be s right so over here the review time period is fixed that is we have decided that after every month we are going to review the inventory level or the position level of the particular sku or after every one week or a two weeks so this review time period is fixed okay but uh, the s is going to be placed that is basically the decided level of the maximum inventory that so th which means in over here in this system is also the order size is also going to be in a variable form and the last system is basically called as capital R, small s and capital S system. So this is basically 
after the fixed time period we are going to review the order okay and uh, uh, then if that particular sku inventory level reaches to that uh, reorder point then we are going to place the order and how much we are going to place the order that our inventory position must reach up to the capital s that is a pre-decided maximum inventory level okay this is the rss system right so usually how much we are uh, going to calculate the inventory position or you can say the available stock we have so the quantity we have available in our system or you can say on hand plus the quantity we have placed the order that in order to meet the demand during the lead time minus if there is a back order okay so using these inventory control systems whatever the inventory control system you have adopted based on that we are basically calculating uh, the value of q the value of s okay and so on right and the factor it is going to be play the role uh, for the inventory controlling system or building the inventory models are basically the demand factor okay the supply and lead time factor the review period okay uh, whether the demand is excess or the under demand the planning horizon and the changing inventory okay so first of all is the demand is deterministic mean is the demand is known or not is the demand is stock or stock or stationary over the time or the names non-stationary so that is basically this is basically representing the demand level or you can say the consumption how we are consuming that is basically the demand okay so we need to know whether the demand is deterministic or a stock costing okay or stationary over the time or you can say the dynamic okay whether the lead time is deterministic and stock costing whether the review system as we have seen is this a continuous or a periodic review system you are going to adopt okay is the back order allowed or not okay is the planning horizon single period or a finite planning horizon or an infinite planning horizon okay is the product type is perishable or not perishable all these factors are basically playing the important role in order to decide which kind of inventory model we are going to apply okay so in the, in the upcoming video in the next video we will talk about the different inventory models and under what particular situation we can apply the particular inventory model okay so thank you so much see you in the next video